Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today I'm in Bogota, Colombia. This is the capital of Colombia, high up in the Andes Mountains. The food here is distinct from the Caribbean coast where we started our trip here in Colombia and today I'm taking you on a street food tour of Bogota. We're starting things off at the Perseverance Market and then I'm going to take you to show you some of the sights around Bogota. I am super excited to be here. It's going to be a great episode so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Colombian street food. So this is the Perseverance Market. This neighborhood is called La Perseverancia. It's a working class neighborhood that was famous because of a beer factory, the very first beer factory that started here in Colombia. So a lot of workers moved to this neighborhood and then this market kind of served those working class individuals. It's a Monday, so it's actually quite quiet in here. I heard that it gets really crazy on the weekends, but there's a couple foods we wanna try. And actually Netflix filmed the episode of Street Food Latin America, Colombia, here at the Perseverance Market. Como a la tarde les da pereza, toca cogerlos por la mañana. So this is the first stall we're gonna try a food from. It's called La Esquina de Mary, which means Mary's Corner. And she's famous for her rompe colchón, which means mattress breaker. Gives you a lot of power. <laughs> it's an aphrodisiac. So I ordered it up. It's actually a Pacific Coast Colombian food, kind of a fish stew with coconut milk. So let's try it. All right, so this is the famous mattress breaker. Love the name very thick coconut broth and you can see a nice big chunk of fish. This is a particular type of fish coming from the Pacific coast of Colombia. And then there's some potatoes in there and then a type of uh, yuca, like a type of cassava. And then it's also served with the smash plantains, the patacones, a piece of avocado here and then some coconut rice. But I just got to try some of this broth first. Yeah, it's very creamy. And it's got a unique flavor. There's a special type of herb in there. It's got a, kind of like a citrusy flavor almost. A little bit sweet, very coconutty. Break off a piece of that. Try it like that. Mm. Little bone. That is a huge chunk of fish. They've also given us a little spicy salsa here. Been told it's not too spicy, so I'm gonna go generous with it. Try that first. Give it a little mix. Oh, that is a really beautiful broth. Let's try some of this potato. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. That is a little bit spicy. Not crazy, but it brings the flavor up to another level. Lots of uh, dishes here that we've tried so far in Colombia come with this beautiful coconut rice. I'm gonna take that and then just give it a little saturation in the broth. Yeah. That broth is rich. Patagone, nice and crispy. Oh man, this is good meal. I love the fresh flavors here in Colombia and this soup broth is amazing. And I don't know much about the mattress breaking effect. That's for me to know and for you to never find it. But damn, I can tell you it's really delicious. Colombia really goes hard on the soup game. I'm trying another soup called Trifasico from this place called Donde Gladys. So it's uh, three different meats, chicken, pork, and beef, and then they put all kinds of other stuff in there. I mean, this is a serious bowl of soup. If I'm not full from the mattress breaker, I'm definitely gonna be full after eating this soup. It is absolutely massive, packed with all kinds of different things. So let's try it out. Okay. 
Look at this monster bowl of soup. Oh my God, there's so much going on. So it's topped with some cilantro and then this salsa, which is called ogao. And I also see lots of veggies in there. There's corn, potatoes, and then all those three meats that I mentioned. But let me just try some of this broth. It's almost overflowing in this bowl. Mm. So completely different flavor than the last soup. No coconut milk in this one. It's got a little bit saltier of a flavor. And I had a little piece of the old gao there. I can taste some, some onion, some tomato. Yum. That just tastes home cooked. This is gonna be hard to get at without spilling, but okay, I've got a big piece of beef bone there. What is this one? Look at the chunks of meat in there. I think that one's pork. Look at that, huge chunks. And then I've got a full chicken drumstick back here too. Let's try a piece of this right here. Let's transfer it onto my rice over here. Look at the size of that chunk. Oh my gosh, that is huge. So you can really see how this is a working class neighborhood. Come here, get filled up. Oh. Mm. It felt like it was gonna be tough when I was trying to pull it apart, but it actually really fell apart in my mouth there. It's very simple. It was lighter than the last one, but like I said, it tastes home cooked. Just simple, delicious flavors. Yum. All right, let's try out a piece of this chicken next. This is really a game of do not spill the soup. Okay, there we go. Let's try that. Yum. Mm -hmm. Chicken is also very soft. This is such a hearty bowl of soup. Oh my gosh, this could feed a family. Is that a piece of beef? Is that beef? Must be, yeah. Okay, wait, let me try to. I haven't tried the beef yet. I got a new plate because I'm running out of room. Let me try to get at this meat if I can. It's really stuck on the bone there. <laughs> oh. oh wow, this one is super tough. There we go. Mm. Beef is from a, a tougher cut than the other two meat. I think I like the other soup better. A lot more flavor in the broth, but this one's still good. That was a seriously heavy soup, and unfortunately, because it's Monday, it's pretty dead here at the Perseverance Market. So I think instead we're going to head into the downtown part of Bogota, show you around the sites, and take you to the famous Botero Museum, a really cool artist from Colombia. So let's go. So this is the Museum of Colombian artist Fernando Botero. He has his own unique style and I love it. So he particularly likes to paint women and men in a very voluptuous, very thick style. It's housed in this beautiful building, two-story building with this open courtyard, beautiful gardens. And if you watch the Cartagena episode, you'll remember that there is a Botero statue in front of the church there where it said if you rub the woman's uh, bottom or her breasts that uh, it's good luck to come back to Cartagena. So I gave her a little slap. There's also all kinds of sculptures here, not just paintings. He even draws the animals super thick and chubby. Really cute actually, I love the style. Especially the Mona Lisa one, thick Mona Lisa. at the painting, I can see the story behind the pictures and they are really cute.
So we've come to Plaza Bolivar. This is kind of the central square of the downtown area of Bogota. There are millions of pigeons everywhere and you've got this beautiful, beautiful church behind me here and the weather in Bogota is incredible. I think it's about 16 degrees. It's just perfect, perfect weather for walking around and touring around the city. And if you've heard of Colombian coffee, you know it's some of the best in the world. So we've got to get ourselves a cup of coffee. So we're going to head to a historical famous cafe for some famous Colombian coffee. <laughs> this method, yeah. There are even like champion championships. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Competitions. Uh, competitions. Yeah. Oh, wow. I extract the coffee, I turn it around, and with the pressure of I make, it's gonna be good. Ah. Now you can take the aroma. Oh. So this cafe is called Art y Passion Cafe and I ordered up like a kind of like a tasting menu. So the first one she brought out was called an Aero Press. And basically she flips it upside down and kind of pumps the coffee out. And this is my first cup right here and it smells absolutely incredible. I'm so ready to try this out. Yeah, it's got like a strong acidity. I love when the coffee has a kind of sour, acidic flavor to it. She said I should drink it while it's hot, drink it while it's warm, and then drink it while it's cold. It's quite a, a process here. Not uh, <laughs> that much of a coffee lover. I just like to have a coffee every morning, but it's good. So how it works. Basically, I'm gonna, uh, it has four parts. The method has four parts. The first one, the balloon. This is the flat or the body. Here we have a porta filter that has a paper filter. And here we have the fire. And it's also gonna be so hot. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. This is like a very educational experience. She just did a second brewing method called a siphon. It looked like a science experiment. She basically puts a flame underneath it and then it comes up and mixes with the coffee, the water does, and then it kind of drops down at the end. And then the color ended up being completely different than the last one. And I can tell the smell, the aroma is uh, a lot different too. Mm. Oh, it's still acidic. It honestly tastes almost the exact same to me. Maybe like less strong, but similar acidity, sourness. Not a whole lot of difference. I thought it was gonna be a lot different. Mm. It's so good though. Okay, I am wired already. Look at this, we got six different cups of coffee and then she just brought out another one. This one's like Turkish coffee. We didn't film all of them, just tasting them now. Let's try this Turkish coffee one. pieces of cloves in it. Yum, that's good. So the bean is the same bean for all of them, but then the method for all of them is different. It's really uh, complicated stuff. I mean, like I said, I like coffee, but I don't know if I like coffee that much. But it's good, it tastes good. Really good coffee. Honestly, that was a full on experience, like a lesson on all these different coffee brewing methods. And now I'm gonna take a taxi to the cable car, which takes you up to an area called Monserrate, and it should have a pretty beautiful view over Bogota. Let's go. Okay, we have a change of plans. We are not going to Monserrate uh, right as we were finishing filming that bit. We turned the cameras off and we were going to get in the taxi to go to Monserrate. And Mink had her phone stolen right in plain daylight out of her hand and halfway into her pocket as she was putting it away. And 
I heard a lot about Bogota being uh, dangerous and we haven't filmed anything in Colombia without a guide. And we had a guide this morning at the market and then we just went to have the coffee by ourselves and we were just gonna head to Monserrate by ourselves. And that was the first part of this entire trip that we had filmed on our own. And I don't know, can you zoom in on that and see my face? But basically, I was getting in the taxi first and as I was getting in, Mink started screaming and I saw a guy with, it was like a movie. He had a black hoodie on over his head like this and we were on a busy, busy four lane highway basically and he started running across the highway and I just immediately got out of the taxi and started running after him and as I was running across the street, Mink is screaming. So people are, the people are looking, and there's a bus, and the bus hits the brakes to let the guy go by. And then there's another car on the other side, and the car nearly hits me. And then I basically almost got hit by the car, and I hit the ground, hit my head really hard, and my arm even worse off the guardrail and I had this bag on like this and the, this camera on here. So I'm like running with the camera and the bag and I hit the ground really hard, but I can see he's not far in front of me. So I got up and I kept running after him and the cars are stopping and I'm screaming at him at this point. And now everybody on the street is realizing what's going on. And he runs into this alleyway and it's packed with people. And then there was a security guard there and I looked at the security guard and I was like, where is he, where is he? And then I saw this guy just walking, like casual, like he was trying to, he ran in the alley and he put his hood up and he turned around and he tried to walk out like it was not him. And then I just grabbed that guy because the security guard didn't really know if it was that guy or not. And I didn't know either, but I just knew he was wearing black. So I grabbed him and I just held on to him and I didn't let go. And I'm looking back at everybody to try to tell me who was the guy running because he was running clearly he did something wrong and they're pointing at this guy so i'm pulled him and i'm like i don't even know what happened at that point but basically he pulls out the phone and just gives it back, back to me we got the phone back so i can't believe we got the phone back and all those stories about bogota being not very safe well i can tell you you got to be extra careful here we were getting in the taxi and it's just at the time where you don't expect it. Anyway, um, that hurt really bad. My head hurts really bad, but my arm hurts even worse. So anyway, I don't know. My arm, I don't think there's any cut right now. So that's the end of today's episode, but I will end it on a positive note and say that everyone that we've met in Colombia and interacted with has been literally some of the most friendliest people. Like I'm blown away by how friendly people are here. And I've loved the country so far and the food is delicious. So other than this negative experience, it's been a really good trip. So thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you on the next episode of Chopstick Travel, bye.